Who has the best Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto? Well, obviously it's down to your personal preferences. The Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto is probably the most popular piece ever written for violin and orchestra. And every single violinist that you've ever heard of probably has a recording of it somewhere on YouTube. I mean, even for me, it was my personal weapon of choice when I won the competition that launched my career. Now with such a popular piece, there's undoubtedly many different interpretations of it. So today we're on a quest again to find the best aspects of each performer. We've got a lineup of star soloists and we're gonna find out who has has the best Tchaikovsky. All right, so first up we have David Oistrakh. Now I'm super excited because this is considered one of the best performances of the piece. All right, all right, I just wanna pause there and just like say that even that intro is just so beautiful. He uses a lot of bow in his sound, so he's got that lift already automatically. So when you think about Tchaikovsky and, and the phrasing, it's very much all about that, that air. Even in the luscious part, you always have this sort of... Uh... You always have this beautiful phrase that soars. There's just so much storytelling behind David Oistrakh's sound. Like for example, the Once Upon a Time. And then there's more here. I definitely model my Tchaikovsky performance after his. It's that good. He's so strong and austere, but then yet he has this incredible, like vulnerable sound. It's like so creamy, it's so buttery. <sighs> so instead of like, let's say just the austere, but then just the vulnerability would be like. But then when you combine the both, it's like. That's depth right there. I remember being very kind of confused at this point because he plays it quite with a lot of like panache, right? He's using the right amount, extra articulation from what we're hearing from the close mics. And then when you're in the hall, it just comes out like the steps on point of the ballet. In effect, when you hear it from far away, it then becomes like a... Those are great performances. All right, we're gonna move on. We have Perlman next. Oh, let's, let's, let's hear him play. Wow, he's really milking it. <laughs> You can hear he's like really expanding out that intro. Oistrock kind of just went through it, I would say more elegant. You've got Perlman here, who's doing it in a much more grander sort of like, as was the style I think in the 90s. Mm. I was so sure that he was gonna be really milking that part. It's But instead, he's just like pretty, pretty straightforward here. Plays it very simply. Which is also really nice. I think that there's a balance at the end, but it's so cool to be able to try everything and try everything you should. Try it out in front of people, by the way, I might add. That's when you can get the most feedback. I used to practice in front of my mom all the time, but then when I moved away, I couldn't practice in front of her anymore. I never forgot that feeling of being able to play in front of others. And so that's why I've been working on for the past two years, a space where everyone can come together, practice together, get feedback from each other, and it's called Tonic. On Tonic, you can do all sorts of things. There's practice challenges, you can get motivated, you can make friends see others who are also practicing the same pieces as you are. It's free, so definitely go check it out. All right, I wanna hear the end of the Tchaikovsky played by Perlman. Wow. 
Check out this part here. He's using what's known as a vibrato trill. I think this happens because Perlman's fingers are just so thick. You can see it right here. Right there. So yeah, you can see that he's using the vibrato trill. Wait, I don't think he's playing the top note of the octave because his finger isn't near the E string. Oh my gosh. He's relying on the harmonics, the natural frequency of the note. I'm not playing the E string at all. Wow. I never knew that. That was an Easter egg discovered today. So you can see there are different tricks and different uh, techniques used by different artists. All right, the next person is Elena Baeva. Okay, a lot more airy. Reminds me of Yanine Jansen's style that has like the... Uses the air to carry the notes, but then places the notes intentionally within the airiness. It's a softer approach to it. It's more intimate. Yeah, which can also have the effect of bringing the listener in. You see, right there, it was a soft landing. I'm sure it's gonna sound like this. Yeah, see? It's never hit. This would be hit by, by contrast. Remember Oystrox version of this? This is like almost the opposite of that. Wow. Wow, I don't think I've ever heard such like a light Tchaikovsky. Very cool. So you can see already three very, very different interpretations of the Tchaikovsky. Let's move on. We've still got one more. Wow, is this mine? <laughs> Why didn't you guys tell me? Ooh. Not bad. Oh, hey guys, that's not, that's not bad. Even from the first note, I was like, whoa, that's a juicy A. It was like, uh, it had that like, mmm. That was my first Stradivarius that I ever played. Oh, you never forget your first. It's also very light, but has like heaviness to it too. So being as objective as I can be, I'm just listening to this young man. Let's address him as that. And I would say that it's like a very honest, it's very direct way of playing. I didn't think so at the time. I was just trying to, you know, play. Remember what I said before, it's like, when do you listen to these? If you're in a timeline where things are very simple, then you want something more complex. But if you're living in a timeline where everything's chaos, you don't know what to believe, then honest playing really comes through in a very nice way. Oh, not bad. Yeah, quite dainty. Oh, but with like also with substance. You'll notice that I do like occasional side eyes. I'll look towards the audience because I didn't have a lot of experience playing in large spaces. This was my way of just trying to like remind myself that I'm in this huge space. I need to project. I need to include everyone. Wow. 
wow. A little, little intonation there. Oh, holding back. I would not agree with that interpretation right now. That's not a pleasant sound right there. I think I was uh, very nervous. <sighs> what was going on, young Ray? Come on. Are those octaves that hard? I would give him a lot of encouragement and hope and wish that he continues to grow and be happy and have a successful career. <laughs> so that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for watching this and I hope you found it helpful as well as interesting to hear all the different types of interpretations that you can have for a piece. Definitely keep practicing. Oh, and if you wanna hear some of my other practice challenges or interpretations where we dive in and see who has the best Mendelssohn or Sibelius, go check out those videos as well for now. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.